Hi everybody. So here's something I didn't think about until today. Apparently, every time I take a footstep, I generate somewhere between 5 and 10 watts. Estimates vary. I thought that was crazy because on an average day, I'll take about 10,000 steps or so. And that turns out to be around about 14 watt hours. I mean, my phone is 10 watt hour battery, so I could keep my phone charged just by walking around. I don't actually need to plug it in. And of course, that isn't something that's escaped people. And we have lots of footstep generators where there's a static pavement you tread on. And the military are looking at things like or generating shoes, bouncing backpacks that generate, because this is a lot of energy. And there's about 8 billion of us, so it's a huge amount of energy and an intensive area of research. There are, of course, lots of people do, coming up with lots of interesting ideas. But the interesting challenge is most human movement is either bouncing up and down or moving backwards and forwards. There's not an awful lot of this kind of thing that goes on. And if you think about nature, in the natural environment, most of that movement is reciprocating. Very, very little of it is circular. So changing that up and down, backwards and forwards, into round and round is one of the interesting challenges that people are facing. Of course, you could look at things like linear generators, but they have their own issues. The main thing is that. Now, we have looked at this when we looked at a ratchet mechanism that only went one way, irrespective of how you turned it. But it was quite a lot of parts and it was quite uh, complicated to build. However, in 1956, 1956, eh, Seiko came up with this thing, and they called this thing 100% the magic lever. Now, the magic lever is awesome because whichever way you turn this, this drive will turn this only in one way, the direction of the arrow. What Seiko did was they attached a weight to it, and that's how their self-winding watches work. There's a oscillating weight that drives in only one direction to wind up a spring. And of course, I'm fascinated by that for my own reasons, mostly to do with energy scavenging and energy ga gathering, energy generation. So I drew this up in Tinkercad. Of course, I have made these files freely available in Thingiverse, and the link for that is in the description below. Now, I made it relatively large because I want to be able to see it. I want to be able to handle it and work it. Now, the idea here is that the input could be by another gear system, input here, either oscillating or rotating, and the output would be drawn from here, which would be rotation only in one direction. Now the joy of this is it's only really three parts. We've got the ratchet mechanism there that goes on the bottom. We've got the drive, which is really a crank actually. It's just a crank and I've put um, the cog on, like I say, so I can interface it. And then this ratchet arm. Now the ratchet arm matters which way around it goes. You'll notice there's a square hook here and a rounded hook here. And it goes on there like that. That's it put together. This little clip just holds that on top. <laughs> there you go. Dead easy, few parts. Let's have a look at it actually working. And I'm with Seiko on that. That truly is a magic lever. So we're looking at the Edison phonometer or voice engine. We've already made this. It's a voice uh, sound collection horn and then some system for turning that sound energy into another kind of energy. Now we used a magnet and coil because we're using electromagnetic energy to create electricity, but Edison used a mechanical system and that in itself is actually really, really interesting because what he did 
was he created a flywheel with a ratchet on it and he used that vibrating membrane to push the flywheel round. I like that so much I made this in Tinkercad. It is just a flywheel with a ratchet on it and we're going to put it into this which is a cradle and it fits like that. You can see there's already two bearings in there. They're skater bearings 22 millimeters by 8 millimeters by 7 millimeters. We're going to hang this on as a flywheel. Now to make this a flywheel needs a bit of outside weight and you'll see all these teeny tiny holes. They're 11 millimeters and they take a 10 millimeter steel ball bearing. They're quite a tight press fit in there and they give it weight to the edge. Now all we do to fit that in is pop a ball bearing on there Give it a bit of a whack with the hammer and sure enough it's in there and it'll stay in there. Now we need to do the others. When that's done we put an axle in and then there's this large plate that goes on there and that acts as a guide for the actual ratchet that's going to go in between those two. So we glue that on, pop an axle on. Now in the original Edison used the ratchet and pull mechanism and of course because it's moving such a slight amount it needed a very fine ratchet. We've got it where it's moving quite a large amount relatively speaking and so we can use a coarser ratchet but instead of using a ratchet and pull I don't know if you remember this. It's the Seiko magic winding mechanism. Whichever way you turn that, that always goes in the same direction. And we can use that winding mechanism in this because I've redesigned it to be this hooked fork and it matters which way it goes up. This bit, the sharp bit, goes at the top and it will go onto that ratchet there in the guide sleeve like that. Then we glue on a cap And we're ready to go. Now if I press that button what will happen is that will spin because I put the button out to the side here but it could be at the top quite easily and I'm gonna have to push the button in and out. It's <laughs> so cool but if you put a spring there you would just have to push it in and if we do that That's very cool So, because we could stick a generator on that and we would have a generator system by pushing a button using the Seiko Magic and Edison's Phono Motor. <laughs> Of course I have put the files for this in Thingiverse and the link to that is in the description below. So I was going to put a generator on the magic button mechanism then it struck me that very often you want a generator by itself so you can add it to other projects. So I thought I would do is I would do an adaptable generator that could be added easily to many different projects. And the style that I've chosen is an axial flux serpentine coil generator and it's really only four parts. And these are the four parts. There's a coil former, a cap, and then two pieces that take the magnets. And the pieces that take the magnets are self-explanatory. You just glue in 18 magnets aside. The one that we perhaps skip over a bit too much is the coil. So, Let's have a better look at coil forming. So this is the coil former. Now there are 18 of these little lozenges and 18 straights in there. And the reason there are 18 is because on the magnet disc, there are 18 magnets. And so we need 18 straight bits of coil for the magnets to pass over for it to generate as a serpentine coil. So the number of turns is equal to the number of magnets that you put in. And of course you've done the north, south, north, south. So they're always even. Now, the way to wind the coil is first of all, we need to measure that distance. And I measure that distance pretty simply. I just put a bit of wire in there, wind it round. When it's wound round, pull it out. So I know what length it is and measure that length with the ruler and add on 10%. And then I've got my length that I'm going to be using. Now to wind a coil, what I very often use is this. This is a serpentine coil winding former made for me by a friend of mine called Peter. And he's Grendel 1960. And I'll put a link to the STL file for this if you want to print it off. Because it does make serpentine coil winding super, super easy. But there is one thing, is that it will bend as you get a very big coil on here so I put it on a block of wood makes the whole process very much simpler and we're going to wind 2,000 turns so I'll put this into the vise and we'll get winding. So everything's set up my wires on the turntable and to start it you just put one onto the bench there we go a bit of tape to hold it and then we can start turning and we want 2,000 turns off we go.
Now, Peter's former obviously slides in and out, so you can make these coils as big or as little as you like. The length of the coil is obviously that section round there. If you want a bigger coil, you slide it out and make a bigger coil. When I made the coil, you might have noticed I put that black tape around to make this, and that black tape means that the coil can't actually fall to pieces and we've got a nice coil. Those little bits of black tape fit nicely in there. So what we need to do is just do a little bit of preparation on this by folding it up like that to make a star shape because then it's super easy to get that coil into the coil former just by bending it around there and pushing it in it'll go into the coil former. And once it's in there you can glue the cap on. Now I just glue the cap on with a bit of super glue. And that's it finished and I wound it with this wire. This is 0.1 millimeter uh, enamel copper wire and I can get about 2,000 turns but that's the maximum of what will go into that space. You're probably better off aiming for 1,000, 1,500, something like that so I went a little crazy. But that's it finished. Now you might have noticed there's a great big hole in the middle. That's because I want this to be adaptable. Now I'll, when it's like this, it can be used in one configuration, but another configuration is where you put the axle through the center. So I've also got a plug, and that plug goes in the center like that, and it takes two skater bearings, 22 mil by 8 mil. And that means that the magnets will spin on that axle. If it's like that, then I can fix that to something and have the two magnet rings either side and spin the magnets with something else, which is what I want to do later. But on this one, we're going to put that in the center there to create one piece. So the magnet rings are pretty self-explanatory. You put 18 magnets in north, south, north, south, and then we put a bar through one of those. It goes into that with an 8mm washer as a spacer. There we go, like that, and then we put the other one on the other side. Now if we give this a quick spin by hand, we'll get some kind of voltage reading out of it. So we get about three or four volts out of it, which is not bad for what this is. Now we can increase that voltage quite easily by putting the plates uh, closer to the coil. We can't really do it in this handheld version because it would rub, but when it's fixed in a frame we can get those plates really quite close. You'll get more out of it if you make the magnets stronger, you'll get more out of it if you spin it faster. Now people keep telling me to put metal plates on here, they say that it uh, improves it. To be honest, yeah, go for it if you want. I just like the idea of it being super easy to make without any real problem, which is what I tend to aim for, and as long as the performance is acceptable for that, I'm okay with it. But if you want to improve that, then stronger magnets, uh, metal plates, etc, etc, are ways to go, but this will work just fine out of the box, so to speak, and I made it like this so that it can be put into just about any kind of generator that you happen to be making, whether it's wind, water or hand or whatever it is you're going to do, then this serpentine axial flux generator is pretty cool. So now we've got our push button mechanism and we've got our modular generator, of course what we want to do is put the two together. But to do that we need to make a couple of little adaptations, because if you remember this we had to shove it in and out because it didn't have any springs. So. I bought some springs. These are compression springs. This one is 25 millimeters long by 20 millimeters in diameter, actually 18.5 millimeters, and that's a bit short. So I had to put two of them together. So to do that, I created this in Tinkercad, glued them together to make me a spring loaded push button. And of course, our activating arm needs to go into that button. There we go. We put that back in here and we put the cover plate on. So when we've done that, all I have to do is press that button and it rotates. So of course we want to put the generator on and to do that we need a couple of adaptations to that. So here is the coil on the coil form and you notice in the center there's a bearing there. Well, that bearing I bought from Amazon, I bought two of them for about three pounds and it's 42 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 12 millimeters which is exactly the same thickness as the coil former and one of those has been shoved in there. The other thing that I've done is... Ah, 
reprinted the plates so that we center here has 20 millimeter gap um, circumference. And what that means is it will push straight into that bearing and sit really neatly. And we've got an eight millimeter hole going all the way through. So now we can put the cover plate back on. I've already loaded those with magnets and just shove those in there. So I've stuck it on there and I've created this little cradle here to hold everything because then it won't spin. I mean, a good way of improving this, of course, would be make this magnet backing disc part of this flywheel. Then we could replace this entire pillar with this little cradle and scrunch the whole thing down. But I made it in a modular way because I always want to do other things and I want to do other things with this. But there it is all set up and I've got it on the meter, of course, and we're reading voltage, of course. And I'm going to press that button and we'll see what kind of reading we get out of it. Okay, we got four to six volts out of that. You could charge your phone with that. I mean, we just sat here and pressed that button repeatedly, but of course, any arrangement of that that's going to do that will work just Jim Dandy. We've got it sticking out the side here, but you could put it up there, in which case, if it was under a uh, pavement and you've got it sitting up, every time you stepped on it, it would generate. Now, we've made this quite big and chunky, so it's easy to see how everything was made, but shrinking it down wouldn't be much of a challenge. I had already given you one suggestion about how that might happen, but there are other ways to make this smaller, in which case, well, you could put that in your shoe and every time you took a step, you could put it in a chair every time you sat down or shuffled about. In fact, any system where there's going to be vibrational energy you can harvest, you can use to press that button, turn it into a solid rotation, and have that rotation generate, which is, I think, the joy of one of these things. For anybody who's interested, I've put all of the STL files into one group for this, and it's called the Magic Button Generator, and of course, it is available on Thingiverse if you want to replicate it and give it a go yourself, or if you want to change it, feel free. Let me know how, what you're getting up to. I'd be fascinated to know. So, look at this. It's just a big plant and we've got a bit of wind blowing and look at the leaves wafting backwards and forwards in the wind as it blows. This kind of behavior where it basically wobbles in the wind is very common. The reason it's very common? Well, winds buff it. It's quite rare for winds to blow in a straight line all of the time. Mostly, winds do this to things. That idea of buffeting winds has fascinated me for a while because, as I say, my theory is that the winds buffet far more than they actually blow. If you're on the sea or the area is not occluded or you're in a valley, they're going to blow straight. But we live in an urban environment which is going to make the winds buffet. So I'm always looking at a way of collecting those buffeting winds by using nature as my example. And when I look at that tree, then I think about making something long that will wave. Of course, I'm not the first person to think of this. There have been loads of ideas around this idea of buffeting wind and vibration and something waving. We want to get something to wave. Of course, we need a structure to, for it to wave in. And I've turned to my 3D printer to create these five parts. Start with the arm, we need a bit of rod, 10mm by 5mm by 100mm, we need a centre section we're going to make hollow that we join together, and then we need a slide bit, 20mm by 5mm with cap ends, and we put that hollow into there so that we can uh, merge it later. We need a bit to uh, take the pivot, and we need bits to put the rubber bands on, and we need a bit to stick the rod in, so that rod obviously goes straight up, twist that round, align the whole lot, and merge them what we get is our arm. That's the bit where the rod will fit. And at the bottom there we've got the pivot and we've got our sliding joint for a sliding pin. Right, now for the cradle. The cradle again we begin at a bar, it needs a centering bit so that we know where to sit the pivot point, and then a couple of uprights with caps and again some way of attaching the rubber bands which are just pegs. Align everything up and then merge it and what we get is our cradle.
And now for the pivot point itself, it's just three boxes, make it nice with a nice round cap, line them all up, put an eight mil hole in it so we can put the pivot pin in there and then center them all together and merge it and we get our actual pivot point. That's where the arm will go so it can wobble backwards and forwards. Now for the pins, they're just circles and we can add those together to make the actual pin. And then make a flat circle with the hole in it and that'll make a cap for the other side of the pin so that we can pivot this arm up and down. And that gives us the bits that we actually need to construct our um, wind turbine mechanism. Now we've made them, of course, we need to put them together. This bit, which is a pivot point, goes in there. This bit, which is the bit that's going to be waving backwards and forwards, slots in there, and it's got a pin there that goes on, and then a cap that goes on that pin, and as I said, that glues in there. Then we put some rubber bands between here and here, so one set going from here, one set going from there, to act as a spring, and in the top I've left a four millimetre hole to take a bit of rod that will go in that hole to act as a kind of armature that we can make go backwards and forwards. Okay, that's it put together with its rod, and it's got a couple of rubber bands there to act as springs, and on the end we've got a flat plate to catch the wind. So the idea is that flat plate catches the wind, makes it wobble, and it will oscillate backwards and forwards, pretty much like a leaf or a tree. That's the idea. Let's go and see if it'll actually wobble in the wind. Okay, so that worked, which I thought was pretty cool, because we want to translate that motion into generation. We need some kind of mechanism to do that. And of course, we've got this, our button generator. I've made a change to it. You might notice that the spring is actually missing. And if you look here, you'll see I've changed that arm and I've added this rod right there, because that rod, of course, slots in that slot there. And when we put those two together, when that goes backwards and forwards, it should rotate this, and that's going to generate. Of course, what we need to do now is try it. So I would have said, for a proof of concept, that worked brilliantly. Now, of course, people are investigating this kind of oscillating wind turbine, and there's about three or four concepts out there. Of course, there are a ton of improvements you could do with this. I mean, you know, it didn't turn particularly quickly, so maybe some kind of gearing. This fit here is, well, terrible, so you might have noticed that it wobbled that way as well, as well as having slack before it hit the pin, and of course that represents quite a loss of energy. But that proof of concept, that if we stick a stalk up there that we can blow around in the wind, and use that motion here on this mechanism, then we can use that to drive a generator. That certainly, I think, uh, has been shown as a, a working idea. So this whole bundle, of course, can go in the bottom of some of those other designs that use uh, maybe a little slightly more complex motions than this. But 
loved doing it. That's what the whole point of it was for me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it inspires you. Of course, these files are all available on Thingiverse and I'll put this wind turbine adaption as a, a separate Thingiverse file. The link to that will be in the description. If anybody feels like working on this, then keep me in touch with what you're doing and I'll probably do some other stuff on it anyway. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.